Welcome to What's Left, a weekly political discussion challenging the mainstream left. I'm Eduardo Barca with Andy Lipson. Today we'll be discussing the impeachment inquiry and slash uh, allegations of uh, U.S. American President Donald Trump um, probing or asking the Ukraine President Zelensky um, to probe into uh, his uh, his uh, rival Joe Biden or potential 2020 uh, pres presidential uh, uh, rival. Um, this has been called in the news media um, one of the biggest political crises of Donald Trump's career. So I, it's just it's shy of two weeks that we had found out that there was a whistleblower um, that had filed a complaint against the US president and Congress was trying, attempting, right, to gather information. And we had even, I had mentioned it when we were doing the last week's episode, and I had said that we hadn't even discussed the whistleblower complaint under the current administration. And uh, it seems to be that um, the U.S. president is abusing his power for personal gain. So we will dive, in, we will dive into it. You cannot see my eyes rolling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew those things, those words would catch oh, something. <laughs> You're trying to provoke me already. Eduardo wanted this to be a short episode. We're not this will be a short episode. There's still more information to, 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 to you, unravel. You wanted to not argue and you make all sorts of claims of, oh, the Democrats are trying to use whistleblowers. The, the party that goes after whistleblowers, the party that hates Edward Snowden and Julian Assange. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to give what is out there in the media mostly, and truth, we will delve in. Truth, no, media, it's the not the truth, media, no, truth. but it is the mainstream uh, yes, narrative. Narrative, exactly. and okay. we will now delve into, and I, I will show that, you my I'm positions. Sorry. I'm easily triggered. You know that. <laughs> Whenever you do mainstream media talking points, I just start to lose my mind. <laughs> well, it has been identified. This person, he or she or them has been identified as a CIA official. Um, so, we, um, uh, they write, uh, the President of the U United States is using the power of his office to solicit interference from a foreign country in the 2020 U.S. election. So, um, and there is a release on the 25th um, of July, there was a phone call and there had just been a release of a rough transcript of that um, phone call between um, Donald Trump and Zelensky. Um, Volodymyr Zelensky. I hope I'm saying it right. Vo Volodymyr Zelensky. Mm. Right? So we'll have that name out there in, so that we can have a character as we tell our own narrative. <laughs> <laughs> our own position or yes. point of view on that. Go ahead, Andy. No, Lay I, it out. No, <laughs> me, I, I mean... I um, I want to hear what you think of of this uh, of this episode here, like of what's happening. I'd like to hear at least of your thoughts first about well, what you make of what's what's taking place here. This is in light for me. This is in light for me. In the time that Edward Snowden has released his personal memoir, mm -hmm. um, prominent record yeah something, something like, like that yeah. i forgot i'm so sorry edward yeah. snowden you'll never watch these episodes anyhow but <laughs> i saw an interview with him on nbc it was he is too busy i'm kidding um yes he you know i really liked him and i consider him to be a true whistleblower mm -hmm. and having yes. to run and i just listened to an interview um i listened to several interviews i was in florida and i just come back and welcome back eduardo <laughs> That's right. Welcome back, Eduardo. <laughs> <laughs> Entonces, so I um I heard an interview, uh, and he he really talks about how he had looked into the channels of actually legally going through the process of blowing the whistle on the surveillance program of the NSA, and he had seen that historically it just didn't work out for any of the former whistleblowers in the past, in the few, in the past. And he just thought, you know, I'm not going to risk my chance. I'm not going to do it the proper way because this proper way will only um, historically has been no known that it's more about going after the source person than verifying the information. 
And that's historically just what it's looked like under especially the Espionage Act of the US American country. Um, so just in light of all of that, uh, in those interviews and his release of his book, which the prosecutors here in the USA have held back his the money from his book because yeah. they're trying to have some financial censorship, which mm -hmm. I think is you know a form of also um, repressing information, and just in so so th this is in the background as I'm reading all of this, and to me, I don't think Donald Trump is. You know, there was something about in the LA Times how there was a recording on how he wanted to go after anyone that was releasing the, the spy, as he's called it, mm -hmm. releasing the information from the White House over to CIA intelligence. I don't think this has ever started with Trump. And I think sometimes people who listen to the news currently, especially who have vehement oppositions as the sides are getting more and more divisive between Republicans and Democrats, and there's this two-party system that I think works for both of them. Uh, I think that people are very emotionally um, uh, to the to the Democrats or to the Republicans, not even to the left or the right. I think that that is what's happening. And so people get emotionally invested on picking a side and a team, and they want to just get anything on Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is not the culprit of all of this. It has been the Obama administration and the Bush administration, and prior to that, uh, before that, as well as administrations. But I'm mentioning those two, those two, especially the Bush dynasty and the Obama administration, because they were the groundwork for what we have seen with James Risen, which is another whistleblower, and and the cover up as well from uh, the release of the WikiLeaks files that Chelsea Manning has released, and this is prior to Donald Trump. So. To me, it's the the attack on the whistleblower and blaming it all on Donald Trump is not the 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 main culprit. Is not Donald Trump. We have seen this happen already um, in the past, and I've just mentioned those two recent things in the past: with Edward Snowden, James Risen, and Chelsea Manning. And now that this is happening, I I do think that this person should there should always be transparency. I think that though. I have some suspicions that why release this information because the intelligence community normally aligns with the administration. So for me, I think that there is some partisanship personally. This is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. In that the, whoever is releasing this information, <clears throat> this is not very normal. And why would they even choose the proper channels? I think that they had a little bit of confidence knowing that there is this partisan division knowing that Congress would protect them. Because historically, as I had said, even under the president administration in the past, Congress has never been actually there to defend a whistleblower in the name of transparency, in the name of we have to have full disclosure for the public to know. I don't think that is. I think Congress is protecting, and the whistleblower knows this, because there are clear divisions within the Democrats and the Republicans. But this is not, in the future, should there be all Democrats or all Republicans, I don't think that any whistleblower would go through a proper channel. I think they would have to do what Edward Snowden has done. Uh, now we have this happening and Congress is trying to protect this so-called whistleblower. And I'm, it could be really, I mean, no, hold on, let me explain something. I don't want to just say so-called. I do believe when I say so-called, I want to be clear on something. I do believe that anyone in a position of power, like in that occupying that office of the presidency, shouldn't be making backroom deals. But I know that that's, that's just under this system, this is impossible that you're not going to do that. Uh, and I think that we should know. So I do appreciate knowing. So if this information, whether whatever motives, political motives, I think that the public should know anything that happens in our government, first of all. And that's why I said so-called, because I have some suspicions that there is, uh, like I said, some partisanship um, motives. Um, so that's my take on it, um, to begin with. Uh, and 
that's exactly what Edward Snowden has also sort of, not exactly what I have said, but said that knowing that there is this division between the Republicans and Democrats, it made it a little easier for them to go through a proper channel. Yeah, that's just, I'll start with that. And then I'll delve into more as we carry on. I have more things to say, but I think that I'll just give pause to that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what makes somebody like Chelsea Manning or Edward Snowden actual real whistleblowers um, is one, they released information that actually helps us. Uh, revealing Chelsea Manning, revealing the revealing the the actual real um, actions of the U.S. military in Iraq, so that we can actually know what our U.S. what our government is up to with its war, because it's lying to us. Um, if you think that our government lying to us is good, then you don't like a whistleblower. Um, but if you think a, 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 the 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 government lying to you is bad, then a whistleblower is actually helping working people by revealing the actions of the state. Same with Edward um, Edward Snowden. Um, he was revealing the, 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 the severity and the extent of the security apparatus, the security state we have, where essentially it's collected all with the metadata and things like that. And that's why both Chelsea Manning and um, Edward Snowden are hated by both sides of the aisle, mm -hmm. Democrats and Republicans. Um, first of all, this whistleblower uh, didn't actually have direct contact with the, with the information. The whistleblower, it's, I mean, they've now released the information about what the whistleblower said. That whistleblower had heard some things that had been, was being said within the CIA. Um, I actually think these things are probably true. I actually do think Trump is a probably a bully in regards to um, just, if you're the president of the United States and you pick up the phone and you call Ukraine and you call anybody, of course you're calling with an agenda. That's what the U.S. does. That's why it has uh, 800 military bases in over 70 countries. Mm -hmm. That's why it's got the World Bank and the IMF basically telling countries that if you uh, try, if unless you go to export-driven policies or unless you you uh, no longer spend money on, uh, you know, dealing with homelessness and starvation or, or poverty or hunger in your country, um, then we're going we're gonna to tank your economy by not letting you get loans. So the U.S. The US government lives off of both sticks and, of course, carrots. So that's why it's now sending surface-to-air missiles to Saudi Arabia um, and it's sending 200 troops to Saudi Arabia uh, as, a, as a reward. So I have no question that, the, that just like um, what... Biden oh, three years ago had said, "If you don't, if to the Ukraine, if you don't get rid of your prosecutor, we're not going. We're going to pull the one billion dollars from you." So Biden said that three years ago. I'm I'm sure uh, now Trump is saying, uh, "If you know, if you, well, I think he wants them to go after, um, you know, his son Hunter Biden, and it's to get dirt um, on him." I wouldn't have be, have any question he might do such a thing in the 2020 election. What's not mentioned is in the 2016 election, this is exactly what the, what the Democratic Party did to try to use Ukraine with, and their connections with them to try to find dirt on Trump um, back in the day. So this is how both parties work. Um, the difference between this situation and, and a genuine whistleblower situation that actually threatens or puts the state at risk in relationship with, to its own people is that this whistleblower is, is like you said, partisan. It's a, it's a deep state fight over um, which... Which, capital, which side of the capitalist class is going to um, run the country in this next election. Um, so while, while Trump might be making moves with Ukraine to try to see if he can find dirt on Biden, although Biden looks like he's dropping in the polls, and I don't know if he's even going to be a candidate by the time, um, you know, four or five months from now. Um, we have, uh, so while that is, is taking place, this in, the, the calls for impeachment of Trump in, the, in, in regards to this um, are also completely motivated not by, uh, not, not in terms of like helping the American people or um, more freedom or anything like that. It's, it's, it's put in terms of national security and it's basically attempt to defeat Trump at the polls when the Democrats have absolutely nothing to offer. Um, they have nothing to offer about immigration. They, Trump, is, Trump has now reached an agreement with Honduras around us, um, an asylum agreement which makes it uh, you yeah, know, with Honduras to basically make it harder for people coming from Honduras to seek asylum here. You're not going to hear about that. That's not what you're hearing about. You're not going to hear about Trump basically uh, sending troops to Saudi Arabia and sending surface air missiles. Democrats agree with that. Um, you're not even going to hear so much about the, the, the strike, the, the strike, the UAW strike or the tax, the tax cuts for the rich anymore. The Democrats want to run on the lowest common denominator here. So they're going to use what, what they're finding out from the, uh, from this, from this person, um, secondhand, but it's, it's probably there. I don't. 
I wouldn't even doubt that Trump or anybody in the current U.S. administration is going to be using bullying tactics uh, overtly or or in, in some ways uh, uh, covertly. Um, I don't doubt that for a second. But the fact that the Democrats are are, 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 are are expressing some outrage about that, I find completely hypocritical when they've been doing exactly the same sorts of things, both with Ukraine um, uh, directly um, and in terms of election meddling in 2016 and, in, and, in, and threatens to remove a billion dollars um, from them unless they, they get rid of a prosecutor who it looked like was potentially going after um, people like Hunter Biden and companies that they were connected to. Um, Hunter Biden, who uh, is the son of Joe Biden, who I guess was kicked out of the Navy. Do you know why he was kicked out of the Navy? For I don't know. Uses why. of cocaine or something like that. And he ends up, Hunter Biden ends up getting a, a prominent position in an energy company in Ukraine, literally the year after the U.S. Uh, does a coup in um, in in, uh, in the Ukraine, uh, and along with that coup that the, the Democratic Party helped engineer, uh, they they find that Biden's son suddenly gets a great job on the board, making fifty thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. supposedly. So there's, there's corruption on all ends, um, and I would just say that um, I'm not going to doubt that that Trump. Has, would be would be prone if you're the U.S. president, you're prone to illegality. Um, any pre, as he president is going to be doing all sorts of illegality, criminality, uh, violence against some country, um, uh, bribes t taken or given um, to various countries to influence them. Um, the thing I would say is that if you're on the left and you think impeaching Trump is going to advance our, your agenda, you're a, you're delusional because this Trump impeachment. The Trump impeachment only the, the strategy the Democrats are doing assures that the Democrats are going to try to take power on the lowest with with the least amount of pressure from the left because there's nothing here they're not offering anything other than we're going to take down Trump and and take him down um, or at least weaken him to the point where we can get our crappy candidate candidate elected in two, possibly in 2020 so this is a de desperate strategy by Democrats to become elect to get elected or at least weaken Trump to the point where they could get elected. And in this case, if they, if they actually, if this strategy actually works, it basically means the Democrats have to offer nothing to their base, nothing at all. Now, I already know the Democrats are going to lie to their base and whatever they offer, they're going to take away once they get elected. So it, it doesn't really matter to me, but I'm saying to you, if you think there's something here for you, if you think there's something progressive in taking down Trump down via impeachment through this channel, you're delusional. This is actually a, a, the way for the Democrats to move to the right while challenging Trump. It, t take Trump down while without taking on Trump's policies. And that's what this is going to be. This, that's what impeachment accomplishes here. Um, so it's understandable that now Nancy Pelosi is saying, oh, now I'm going to do this. She knows her party is in a, in a bad way. But, but if you listen to the people in the, in the squad, you know, the, the squad you love, your Charlie's Angels, when, when Rashid, Rashid Tlaib, Rashida Tlaib. Rashida Tlaib, she's writing, impeach the MF. That, if she's writing that, that is not a position of challenging Trump politically or even challenging his agenda politically. That is a pro-Democratic Party shill position of let the Democratic Party get away with challenging Trump without giving people anything. So she should know better, but of course she doesn't know better because it's, she's not, as much as she says she's Democratic Socialist America, that whole left squad group is a complete fraud as well. So that, they're exposing themselves. Because they're letting the Democratic Party get away without talking about Saudi Arabia, without talking about asylum, without talking about health care. All we have to do is talk about impeaching Trump, which, is a, which really is just the ruling class's way of taking, our, our ruling class's way of taking out presidents without having to go through a vote. So it's a coup. It's a coup. It's a capitalist coup, internal coup um, process that you would be enjoying or, or supporting. So we have nothing, we have nothing to gain here. Um, there's nothing to gain from Trump. There's nothing to gain from the Democrats here. Um, and the best thing we can do is understand you are being gaslit, either from the right or from the left, if you think there's something here to look at and uh, to, to gain by supporting one side or the other. Well, I, <laughs> I still like my squad. <laughs> I'm just telling you what they say, what they're doing. <laughs> they're not people I voted for. <laughs> uh, I like the squad a little bit. Okay. <laughs> you like your Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs>
Good luck with that. Alex Jones, is, <laughs> I, I believe, I haven't seen him, but I'll bet you Alex Jones is defending Trump, and that's the wrong position as well. <laughs> it's, it's like there's nothing to defend in Trump. He's a U.S. president. He's, a, he's the biggest bully on the block now. That's what he is. So there's nothing to defend in Trump. But if you, if you think that impeaching him and supporting the forces aligning behind impeaching him, then what you are doing is lining up behind probably the most establishment parts of, of, the, of the ruling class in the United States to try to take down another part of the establishment. And there's nothing there for us. Well, I will um, maybe say what I had said a little bit earlier, um, just so that I could clarify my position before I say what's next after that. I will state again that when I said so-called whistleblower, I meant that 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 I am suspicious of why a whistleblower uh, would go through the proper channels. Most whistleblowers don't right. go through the proper channels because right. they have dirt on the U.S. American government yeah. and not on a specific party. Mm -hmm. So I want to be extra clear before I say what's next, what I'm going to say, my following. Uh, lo siguiente. So this, this, um, this person, I don't know, and that's why I'm also hoping that more will be unraveled, as I normally always say on this program, that I like to wait for more, a little bit longer, just because I don't like to speculate too much. Um, though we did in the beginning of this year for this year, and, um, and, I, and that was sort of, we kind of set ourselves up for that because I was on purpose. But in general, most things I like to wait for a little bit of more of information. So that's my that's the reason why i said so-called whistleblower because i i i always get something of um of a hesitancy when i feel that someone is doing something correctly or legally uh because we don't have many legal legally um correct uh, ways of doing things if you're going to expose the government you're mm -hmm. just going to be sought after right. your entire life right. <laughs> or just made all kinds of difficulties in prison or on the run yeah yeah so i mean look at chelsea manning she was even pardoned by the u.s um president of uh, obama and then back in prison again so you're just it's always going to be a hard yeah. life if you're going to reveal anything so that's why i had said that so now what i'm going to say next is that i do think that it is quite obvious and already from just the way trump acts and the way that he is and it's not just trump but it's quite obvious that, yeah, he already colludes with other governments. It's no brainer for that. In general, I think that Donald Trump, the more he is getting into his, his tenure, his presidency, that he is going to make all kinds of backroom deals. Um, so it's not a surprise to me that this is happening. Simply that, yeah, I, I do appreciate knowing what we already know, but I don't think that wasting our time into the impeachment process and to the inquiry is of any help for us. I think that the elections and this impeachment inquiry is a waste of our time. I, I was having this conversation with my friend uh, Jake in last week and I feel as if so much of our energy is sucked up into this that the only reason why I would use the elections um, process is just to put my own or as together as a group of us or collective of us would put in our own sense into so that we can actually tell folks there's different paths over here too mm -hmm. as you're looking at all these debates mm -hmm. so that we can also attract other people to do something other than just voting every once or four years in this country or every once in six years in my country so uh but in in general, I feel as if this um, the elections and this impeachment and it's just a waste of our time. Our planet is 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 being is in a crisis, and however many however you, you may think that that crisis is the reason for that crisis, we can all of us acknowledge that there is the beginning of a mass extinction, and we have to concentrate all of our power and our energy and our focus and our time in trying to deal with all of that. And instead we are focusing on this impeachment process. 
I would rather us focus on that it's not working at all, that this entire system is not working at, for us, that capitalism in general, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, is just never going to work out for our planet, for our kids, for the animals, and for uh, really for the riddance of poverty and and uh, the just the sadness that exists in the world because of people gaining more power and money and keeping us all at bay, trying to keep us at the bottom of everything so that they can have personal gain. So anyhow, I, I think that we need to start focusing, and I've been thinking about this a lot since I'm very moved by uh, the youth climate activists, and that's where I would like to talk about these things and not to be talking. And I'm only we're only having this discussion because of the reasons why we need to sort of shift people's focus away from this impeachment, and hopefully they sort of focus on what is at stake, which is we have to get down to the root of the issues and not be dealing with these little parts of bad fruit happening, mm -hmm. which is that our elected officials or presidents and political bipartisanships that are happening within um, this system that is basically the entire thing has to be removed. So I think I'm very overwhelmed with the youth, the young people, and that have been protesting, and I want us to focus on that. Whatever we think that whatever movement is trying to hijack that energy, I'm not interested right now in talking about that, but I think the next generation definitely sees something and they feel it. And our generation, my even younger than me, feels that there is something they're being betrayed on, they're being played on, on they are being used and they would like to see a brighter future and all I can say to them is that the brighter future can only happen with us and not with the people that are in power that are just trying to make things to keep it. So anyhow, I, that's all I have to say because this impeachment inquiry is a joke and as well as the whistleblower that I'd like to know more information about, um, I kind of, I almost want to beg to differ, but I'll say this, I almost think that Donald Trump is correct when he says he was making some wondering, uh, making some speculations onto wondering what the motives of this whistleblower's uh, political motives are. I think that we should know. I'd like to know what is the political motives. Um, I don't doubt the sincerity, but there is some, there is obviously some security knowing that you'll have the House of Representatives to cover you and you have the majority there. Had it been differently, I wonder if this really would have been a will whistleblower. So that's just my speculations, if I may. And that may not be very, uh, that may not be very consoling for my friends right now listening to this <laughs> who are mostly on the left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I do doubt the sincerity, the sincerity of the whistleblower. I don't think they, they're a real threat to the U.S. government. I don't think they're any help to us. They're attempting to uh, get all of us to uh, once again pay attention to the, to, the back, to the ball going back and forth between the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, and this, if, if you were one on the left to think that the elections could possibly be used, if, and I'm not, but if you were one, to think that these, this election coming up in 2020 is one that could be used to reset the political agenda towards a, towards a left-wing way, to help working people, to get health care, to protect the environment. If you thought that was going to happen, that, that there was some way of doing that, and if you felt like there was some part of the Democratic Party, whether it be what, Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders, that might be that glimmer of hope, right? Mm -hmm. If you thought that, um, then this impeachment thing is the last thing you want to go to. Mm -hmm. This impeachment thing basically gives the Democratic Party complete cover to say we will defeat Donald Trump while, but, while at the same time give us complete cover to move to the right if we choose to. Because there, there's no political basis to that defeat. It's not challenging any of the policies and saying we're, gonna, we're going to marshal popular support for uh, Medicare for all or popular support for some sort of um, benefits for uh, immigrants coming across the border who need help or asylum or something like that, right? Some kind of reform. That's, so if you were concerned about that, then this impeachment drive is an attack on your cause. Now, 
the Democratic Party itself is an attack on your cause. So you probably should stay outside the Democratic Party, even if you wanted those things. But I'm just saying, even if you thought that there was some part of the Democratic Party that could be marshaled to do this, this, this impeachment drive is an attack on that process, um, which is why it's so silly for any of these left-wingers in the Democratic Party to not point that out and, and go with it, because it's an attack on their cause or what they th think, say is their cause. But they know that, and that's why I think they're frauds. And mm -hmm. that's why I say like, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a fraud, Bernie Sanders is a fraud, Rashida Tlaib is a fraud, because they're not stupid, and they know how this stuff works. And they know that their talking points are now going to be off the thing. But like all of them are saying, even if, if when once they don't win the primaries, they were all saying they were going to support Biden. And Biden is, is as corrupt as they come. He's as corrupt, if not more corrupt, than Donald Trump. Because he's more, he, is, he has deeper ties to the, to the, to the establishment apparatus. Um, so again, if you were going to play lesser evilism, I don't know which one would be lesser evil, Trump or Biden. I don't know. Uh, it's the same problem with Clinton. Mm. So, um, that's the one thing I would say. And, and I think Eduardo was kind of, we, one of the things we, when we, when we were thought, thinking about talking about the, the climate, mm. climate stuff that had happened is I do believe that, 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 that Again, even in there, I think the Democratic Party is operating to uh, cynically use people's concern about the environment and try to drive people to the polls for them, making it seem like they somehow offer an, al an alternative for the environment, even if it's only a half measure. But again, that, that, that is something that I see going on as well. We need to discuss that another time. Yeah, okay. But, but <laughs> the, reason, the reason I mention it is that there is something to learn from this. Um, it's, and Eduardo, you're right to say that we, we are trying to, to, in essentially talking about it, we're trying to say, don't be get fooled. Mm -hmm. this is, yes, that's why we is, talk about it. Right. This yeah. is not anything that you want to, you don't want to get caught up in the game of impeach versus not impeach. Because um, it's all, or, you know, like, oh, Trump is just was doing something this and no, he should be impeached or whatever. You don't want to get caught up in that game. You have to stay focused on what are your political objectives. And this is a way to distract everyone from doing that, on, on, particularly on the left. And yes, onto the right, but I don't care about them. Um, the, the, the reason I say that is that this, again, even, even if there's any, ind anything independent in the, in the, in the, in the uh, movement around the environment, this, this has the effect of getting people caught up in it, getting people caught up in thinking, which side am I on? Am I on the, 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 the establishment, the Democrats here who are doing this, or am I with, am I with the establishment Republicans? Um, and it's just, um, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, I, I think the biggest thing you can also see is just looking and seeing how mainstream media attempts to use all these events to marshal, to, to marshal your attention in one way, way, shape or form. Like it's amazing how many articles have come out about this stuff and, and they make it seem like this is all new about presidents influencing governments. Yeah. That's all they do. When a president picks up the phone to call a government, all you're going to be doing is calling to influence them. That's what they would do, whether it be whether it would be publicly or privately. Um, U.S. is supposedly working out of a, a giant deal with Britain, with uh, Britain doing, taking Brexit. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's been talk, uh, my mom sent me an article uh, uh, from, I can't remember if the Atlantic something or another, which is talking about how the U.S. is trying to work out a, a deal which basically links British economy with the U.S. economy and benefits them both. Oh. So this is the kind of stuff that's going to be going on and always goes on. This is how these states operate. We don't benefit from those machinations um, as much as people want to make, make them think we do. Um, and so there, there's nothing new here. Um, it's going to be used as a political game to, to, to uh, fool us in the elections. But the biggest impact it will have if we fall for it um, and fall for believing that we, we have a stake on one side or the other is anything that you think you're trying to fight for is going to get lost and swept up into the deep state, into this... Uh, into the security apparatus, which is responsible for monitoring both these po political, like the CIA and the NSA. Like, supposedly some of this stuff came from the fact that the CIA is monitoring the president while he's talking to this Ukrainian president. That's how they work. Gives you a sense of who really controls the country. Um, so uh, there really is nothing here for us. I wanted to make a clarification because you had said, when I had said, I don't doubt the so-called whistleblower sincerity and then you had shared your after after me you had said i do doubt 
their sincerity, I realize we're not talking about mm. the same thing. I want to clear, and it's good that you responded this way because it gives me an idea of what others might be in possibly interpreting what I meant yeah. by that. When I said, I don't doubt the sincerity of the so-called whistleblower, um, I meant to say that I don't doubt the veracity of what is being uh, the complaint. I don't doubt that it is genuine, that everything there that the CIA is trying to prove um, and, and showed to Congress and that it has been revealed, now you have the document, that that is anywhere false. I think that there are some missing details because maybe the White House has not shared everything and they did put things into a separate computer system that yeah. is coded, yes, and there might be some missing details, but that this is not falsification is what I meant to say. So that's what I meant when I said I don't doubt that the sincerity is that there isn't, in my mind, this is clear that this happened, mm -hmm. except we may not know the precise exact details of everything because the White House has maybe barred some of those details. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to clear. And uh, secondly, you mentioned the climate um, strikes, the protests, and I think that we'll do, maybe that could be another conversation for another time. I have different opinions and points of view. I, I do believe, like you had said, that the Democrats might take some of it to their advantage for the elections um, because the Republicans don't really see the climate change as part of their political agenda, and they do, and I think that, yes, there might be some of that we can discuss, but I also don't doubt that there is genuine desire for change, whether that is as, as, as young people, I think that, that, that what is happening globally, and not even young people, older people as well, I, I do know that people are sensing their pulse on something that's happening around the globe, and they, they're desperate for some transformation, and they may not even know how that might come about. And what I'm suggesting for most of those people, and when I have these conversations with people, is that they truly seek alternative political movements other than the elections. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, I think that I'm a little bit um, changed from my uh, trip in Florida. <laughs> I had um, very intense conversations with my friend Jake and I want to sort of now I'm seeing this clear like like I'm now I feel a little came from a meditation cave or something. You're now a pro-capitalist anarchist now? <laughs> wow, did you change it completely? Change, no, I don't have that. <laughs> no, I, I, just listening to someone without, just, just to listen. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of listening to someone that is not actually identifies themselves on the right, but some of the talking points do come from the right and how I understand it. And maybe this is not even fair to him because it's not somehow he doesn't see it linear this way. But I think most of our audience may have, well, a high percentage of our audience may have their idea of political spectrum as something linear from left to right. So I will just say that for conventional reasons in our speech right now, I will just say that I have a different point of view of the right. And the right in the sense that I don't see them as Republicans or I don't see them as Donald Trump supporters, but I see them as almost allies as well. And then I think that they're being tricked as well mm -hmm. by the Republicans. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump is clearly playing you all out as well yep. as the Democrats play the left. Yep. So I've just been doing a lot of listening and my reflections sort of from the trip back have given me newfound relationship to people that might identify on the so-called right that I'm just using as of right now for conventional reasons for us to speak about political ideology. And I just doing a lot of listening has allowed me to sort of, yes, say that my little squad is endearing, but I actually don't trust them and it allows me to sort of see both these parties clearly as a team. Mm. And uh, that's what I've come away with that trip. Whereas maybe before on what's left, I may have slightly favored the Democrats mm. 
a bit, but maybe secretly, right? And maybe that may have been manifested in some of my speech, but I think for our audience, I found a new leaf and I will now be seeking more of this uh, common ground with people that might think differently from me because I think that there is newfound allyship that could be found somewhere. So I came away with that because I think having gone to and having had conversations with people that identify on the so-called right, I see clearly how they are as well being deceived, and misrepresented, used, and it hurts me to know that everyone is actually, you know, really trying hard, genuinely, to seek a better life for themselves and their families. And it just sort of gave me a new perception and perspective. And I feel as if people were all just trying, even some of the rhetoric and the conversations around immigration and stuff that it was hard for me to listen to, sort of allowed me to see that people operate from fear and that is how Donald Trump plays his base as well as the Democrats. Yep. So anyhow, it just mm -hmm. I think that that shift in me over the trip that I had had has will sort of guide how I take on my conversations on on what's left of our program. Uh, so I thought I'd share that with everyone. Mm. That's the first time I heard that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't even shared it with you. Andy. No, no, no. That's, I mean, I don't think I could have said it better in terms of they're, they're, they're essentially working for the same team. Like, they're two sides of the same team. I think yeah. that's really true. And that's what we're seeing here. They're both fooling us and getting us thinking that there's something to be had in defending Trump or attacking Trump around this little episode here with Ukraine. When this is, this is, this little app episode here is nothing compared to what the U.S. always, daily, hourly, yeah. every second does to influence all every country around the globe yeah. in all sorts of criminal ways and in all sorts of seductive ways. And all of, it's all of it, all of it is wrong. Every, all, every bit of influence the U.S. is using is, is for the, it's just for the benefit of our capitalist class, not for us, not for the people over in those countries. And um, it has to all be opposed. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. So for me, that this is sort of, allows me to, I don't know, I just, I will, yeah, I think I said what I yeah. had to say. Yeah. I mean, one, so just a few things, and that's, I mean, I think that's interesting. I don't know <laughs> more about this. Apparently, you have one conversation with Jake in Florida. and Well, I had multiple a, with not just him, but a, with other people. A bigger impact than 68 episodes with me. Oh, well, you know, I, I'm trying, I'm trying here, folks. I but. think socialists... <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> but I'll say this: <laughs> have a hard time connecting with the real. Uh, yes, that's one thing you've said over and over again. <laughs> it's like Andy, man. I, I Natalie, can, yes, <laughs> my dear Natalie. <laughs> um, but uh, you know what's interesting is people. This is this thing ultimately is Russia Gate 2.0. Um, it is. It's that. I mean, there, there's probably more validity validity here to the claims actually than there was in Russia Gate. But what's ironic is that. The president, who's a Manchurian candidate for Russia, is now being accused of using one of the biggest enemies of Russia as an as a political ally now against the an opponent, a political opponent he has in the United States. So they'll say anything about anyone. Um, and the fact is, is no U.S. president and has any permanent alliances with anybody other than its own ruling class. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to understand that. And all these things that they get us to think about them in Israel or them in Saudi Arabia or them in China or them in North Korea or them in South Korea or them in Russia or them in Britain or them in Germany. All of it is 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 built on sand that can that it always is, can be rewritten. Uh, the only thing that's a rock is profits and U.S. self-interest. Um, that is the only rock that exists for presidents. Um, and, you know, the idea that they're going to impeach this person uh, for whether it be treasons or high crimes and misdemeanors this is what I was telling Brandon the other day, is one of the other things you can be impeached for is bribery. And um, if presidents can be impeached for bribery, then I think you'd have to start from probably the first president we've ever had and impeach them all down the line. How many presidents have we had so far? 50? 
Oh, you're the one who's 60? from this country. I don't know. Like 60 something. <laughs> Impeached all 60 presidents for bribery. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a wrap. So impeachment is just there, just in case, ultimately, just in case working people elect the wrong kind of person and they got to be taken out. Um, and if you're not going to shoot them, um, you're going to remove them in this in this other way. And it's it's a tool of the ruling class to make sure that the government doesn't get too out of the its formal government doesn't get too out of line. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Andy, for 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 sharing. And you too, and welcome back from Florida. Yeah, good work. Jamie. And it wasn't it wasn't anyone when no one was. I will just say it wasn't trying to convince me it was more of just learning to listen mm -hmm. and I meditate so I sort of had a lot of deep reflections on what people are trying to say it yeah. wasn't it wasn't very good how they presented their information but <laughs> it allowed me to be quiet and listen so. mm -hmm. right anything well, else about this I don't think Neither. so I don't I think I've said my spiel and mm -hmm. I will I'm very grateful and for having this program and we will continue having it and thank you Andy thank for you. always editing yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have any ideas about next week maybe the climate strikes uh, I I'm trying to reach the, the Claire from LA to see if she would be willing to give us an update on how things have gone in the LA teachers union since their strike mm -hmm. um, I reached out to Donna for and she has been open to doing it uh, an overview of Oakland um, Oakland, Oakland schools have been, um, they've been closing schools like we thought they would start to do. They've been doing that, the Board of Ed. Um, and so that, I would like to come to that. And we also, there is a, we will in the next few weeks have started an interview with an, another socialist I ran into from North Carolina. Um, he actually has experience in the military. And I think we want to have kind of a two-part episode uh, where we learn a little about him, but use it as a, as a, start, a launching point to have some more questions about his experience in the military, because um, he's he's a he was an officer in the military, from my mm -hmm. understanding, and left it, and um, I'd really get to like to know what what that was like. Um, mm -hmm. So we hope to do that. So we have a, a number of interviews kind of coming up, um, and uh, and maybe and I should give an update about my election stuff. Yes. Okay. So we, as uh, we had our election in our UBC and our union um, at our site, Mission High School, and as I thought, we lost. Um, we lost by literally the exact percentage that I thought we would lose by. We got, what was it, 31% people voted for us and our take down the principal. Andy and... Uh, Greg. Uh, yes, Greg. Um, and 69% 69 69 voted for... To a trio. A, 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 another set who, um, you know, who want to run the union but uh, have a little bit of different attitude towards challenging our principal. So... Um, they're like the squad. Yeah. Well, I would just say that we have very different visions of how the union should run. Um, and, but what I'm glad about from that result is this is actually, this is what our workers at Mission want. Um, it is not necessarily what I believe we should be fighting for or how we should do it, but that's not the important point. The important point for a union is that people fight, get the leadership that they think represents them, and this is how we learn. If it's going to work, if it works, then I'm wrong. Then this, then we can have peace with our principal and our maybe potentially our district, and everything can work. Um, but if it, if I'm right, that ultimately that kind of collaboration works against workers in the working class, then I do believe this has a chance to expose that over time. Um, so, but you don't learn except by doing. Um, and so I actually think this is a good result um, because it's the truth. It's the truth of what the, my workers at Mission want. And um, we'll have to see what it delivers. Oh, yeah. We'll keep updating us with it. And I'm curious to see how it looks out because this is the beginning of the school year. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. So welcome back, even though I delayed it for quite some time. You didn't allow me to say it in the beginning. I was going to say something nice. I always like picking on you. You just kept on talking and talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love the kid on TV. All right. Um, so um, please check us out on any of our five platforms. You can check us out on BitChute, Stitcher, uh, Google Play, iTunes Podcast, or YouTube. Please rate, review, subscribe, and best of all, share with your community. And we look forward to any comments on the YouTube channel if you wish. Yes. And thank you very much for uh, checking us out. All right. See you next See you week. All. Ciao. That might as well do a sound check. So, what did we say today's episode is about? Today's episode will be about um, 
allegations of the U.S. American president, Donald Trump, allegedly uh, making backroom deals with the Ukraine president. Right. What's that guy's name? Zelensky? Zelensky. Zelensky. And uh, what's, what's Biden's son? Hunter. <laughs> Hunter Biden. Oh, that is a cannot be this. That cannot be a, a, a name of a capitalist. I'm sure. <laughs> if you're Hunter, you're you're like a working class guy, right? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs>